Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about spiderweb diffraction. There's a picture of a spider web in my backyard with the early morning sun off to the upper right illuminating the web. You can see the little spider over here. He's about two millimeters long. You'll see that there's some bright glinty parts to the web and they seem to be oriented perpendicular to the sun rays coming in. And then you'll see there's another interesting part out here. Wanted to take a closer look at this. I've read about spiderweb diffraction many years ago and started looking for it. I've been able to find some good examples of it. I'm calling this video part one because I'm going to be revisiting this whole thing with an eye towards doing a little more analytic work and trying to learn some more about how this is created. It's probably a pretty complicated process. So now look what happens if we get the spider web out of focus. The parts that were just shiny and glinty before take on a very interesting character, a hint of bands and stripes. They're very different. And, you know, these are kind of mostly greenish. These are bluish. There's some pinks in there. And the closer you look at this, the more interesting it is. But you have to take the web out of focus to see this effect. Here I found another web that was really shining when I looked at it. I got a black card behind the web and still allowed the sun to illuminate. And I've moved in closer with the macro lens. Now things are getting really interesting. The more out of focus the web is, the brighter and more defined these bands are. But as you get into focus, everything starts to become so tight you can't really see it. And then the web the strand gets in focus, and all you see are the little droplets or whatever along them that are catching the light. This pattern here is very different than this pattern. You can also see there are some dome-shaped areas, and they can change character here to here. This may be two different strands of the web. The character of this is almost all dome-shaped. But it's a very unique set of patterns. It's not like you see the same pattern over and over and over. So here we've moved in closer with the macro lens on one of the uh, strands shown in the previous image. Gets even more interesting. It's kind of like a spectrum you'd get like from a diffraction grating, except that is more like the sun is. It's more smeared out, and there's transitions from violet to blue up to yellow and green and red. But here the transitions of colors are very different. Here's a red to a blue. And here's a dome-shaped structure. But it's very unique and it changes quite a bit across even a single strand. Here's another image where I've moved in tighter with the macro lens on a different section of the web that was shown a few images ago. It's very brilliant and very banded. So it, it's very unique and kind of perplexing. You have to wonder if the spiders have eyesight that's not well focused. <laughs> In the mornings, they could look out at their web and you know this is all they'd see is this huge carnival of colors. And again, uh, another section of that web. Just very pretty and very unique but also looks pretty complicated. Here's a montage of different bands that I saw in that web, and they're very different. You know, here we have orange being the predominant color with non-repeating bands. I mean, there's some repeating, but not much. And they change character here, predominantly blue, red, and white. Anyway, you can pause it and more closely at it. I uh, pulled this out of a book by Dawkins just to show you how complicated in structure. Here you have an hourglass exterior and then there's uh, strengthening strands in here where when uh, presumably when the web gets pulled taut it's got lots of strand to keep the strength and that strand stretches out. And so these types of structures must be playing a part in creating these complicated diffraction patterns. And I tend to think that there's another thing in play here where edges of the web are cut, like a fine grating. And there may not be. I, I just don't know. But the whole system and the geometry is involved makes for a complicated situation in explaining and modeling the diffraction that's seen. 
just when you think, oh, well, it's, it's, it's only spider webs that do this. And it's because of these the complications and the way the web is manufactured by the spider. I found this, which is not a dandelion because I'm in the desert southwest. So it's some other seed pod. And these strands have got to be very different than the spider web strands. I doubt you're going to have, you know, strengthening curled up threads inside of these. You're not going to have, you know, bubble droplets. And this is why I think it may be due more to striations on the edge of the fiber. And it could be index of refraction variations as these things grow and are built up. Uh, it, it's clear, you know, that I have to look at, uh, so I have to find more examples now and look at them more closely. So here's a close up with the macro of more of these uh, dandelion type fibers. The ones that are in focus show no diffraction and the ones that are out of focus have this banding. So there's a lot of characteristics of this that look like the spider webs. Here's another one. Again, you've got to be out of focus. The uh, strands that are in focus do not display this effect. So I always keep an eye out for things that might help figure out what's going on and I ran across a plate that was surface ground, and you can see the grooves that were put in for the grinding. I put some fluorescent lights above the plate and then defocused the plate. Here is a similar banding. It doesn't really have exactly the same characteristics, but it shows that fine grooves can create this effect when you put the grooves out of focus, <clears throat> which is why I tend to think that little striations on the edges of these fibers may play a pretty important role. But this is not uh, the same situation. It's only maybe a clue. Then I ran across another plate that had even finer surface grinding, and it was a flatter plate. You can see that these are much finer circumferential grinding marks. And here, there was a ceiling overhead that had many fluorescents. When I defocus this plate, you can see that each overhead fluorescent made a different track through this thing. And when you take them out of focus, you get something that has some similar characteristics, this banding. So this ends part one. Part two, I don't know when it will come because I'm going to have to find more of this stuff. I'm going to have to bring it inside, try to illuminate it with high CRI, COB lights, and see if I can reproduce these interference bands. There's a nice website, Dietrich Zawisha. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing his last name. I've left a link in the description to a page that he has on the spider web diffraction, and he has some very interesting ray diagrams and some other conjectures about what's creating them. So you should check out that webpage if you're interested. So thanks for watching.